Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about the transport of proteins into the lysosome. Till now we've been talking about the transport of proteins in different organelles of a cell. We've seen the transport of proteins in mitochondria, transport of the proteins to the chloroplast, the nucleus and peroxisomes. But all those pathways that we saw like transport of a protein to the mitochondria or chloroplast they requires the transport of the protein from cytosol itself because in those cases the proteins are made in the cytosol without being involved and ended up in, in the inside the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. But in this case of transferring a protein into the lysosome, we will see that the protein is produced and, and inserted in, inside the endoplasmic reticulum. Then it will be packaged inside the vesicle, transported from there and then only they will form lysosome. So it's a part of a endomembrane system. How it looks like? If we think of an idea that these are the endoplasmic reticulum, somehow linked. Let's imagine. Should draw it like let's say let's say this is an endoplasmic reticulum, and right after that we have the Golgi apparatus. Right? and so on we have the Golgi apparatus and let's say this is all lysosome so to understand the pathway of how a protein is delivered inside the lysosome you need to know the sequence of the events and to understand the sequence of the events it starts with endoplasmic reticulum then the Golgi apparatus, then the other uh, structures like endosome, many other structures and then finally will be the destination called lysosome. So what is it? If we begin here, the idea of protein synthesis is going on in the endoplasmic reticulum itself because the ribosome is there in the endoplasmic reticulum and, and it is making the polypeptide sequence, making the polypeptide sequences. And once the polypeptide sequence is made, once the protein is made, it will be inserted inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. So once the protein is inserted inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, then the second job is to make a vesicle where the protein will be inserted. So vesicles start forming including the target proteins and then they will be delivered towards the Golgi apparatus. So if I draw it here, the vesicles start forming at a structure like that and here will be this proteins moving inside the vesicle and that protein will now go and fuse with the Golgi apparatus and actually those vesicles will fuse with themselves as a result uh, the Golgi will start actually Golgi is formed with the help of the interaction of those vesicles and the target protein is transferred to the Golgi apparatus. So once that thing is done then what happens in Golgi is those proteins are modified. In different sense there are different chemical modifications. In this case let's say the modif let's say this protein is hydrolase. This is a hydrolase protein that we are tracking. Now the protein that is in the Golgi apparatus should be modified. In this case the modification is let's say uh, addition of uh, sugar that is say mannose addition of mannose and not only the addition of mannose but also there is another modification that is the modification of mannose itself that is phosphorylation of mannose. So the mannose gets phosphorylated and converted into the 6-phosphate. So mannose 6-phosphate is formed in the structure of the hydrolase enzyme. And that all alteration takes place in the Golgi apparatus during the movement of the protein through the Golgi channel or Golgi network. Now once mannose 6-phosphate is formed, then finally that same protein 
move towards the terminal part of the Golgi because you know, if you look at the Golgi there are cis, medial and trans. So once it's there at the end those mannose along with the uh, those those proteins hydrolyze with the mannose 6 phosphate binds to the mannose 6 phosphate receptor that is also present in the Golgi apparatus membrane it's embedded in the membrane so if you look at here let's let's draw the mannose 6 phosphate receptor with a different color let's draw it with the red color so this is the mannose 6 phosphate receptor which binds to the mannose 6 phosphate of the hydrolase enzyme and once this thing is done then it will start creating the vesicles and start pinching out from the Golgi network and then it is transported if I draw it throughout the structures then it will be transported towards lysosome and even before becoming a lysosome the, this vesicles in itself uh, has the capability to convert itself into a lysosome the only difference is lysosome can, contains many of these enzymes hydrolases many of the peptidase lipase and many of these enzymes all together and also they have a very acidic pH so at the very beginning if you look at the if you look at the vesicle it has this mannose 6 phosphate receptor while uh, the hydrolase with mannose 6 phosphate attaches to it at this particular condition there is a ATPS pump or you can say proton pump that is present through this pump ATP hydrolysis is required as an energy source there and that helps driving protons inside this vesicle structure which is known as early endosome. This is the start and initiator point of formation of a lysosome known as early endosome. In this endosome, as ATP hydrolysis is uh, there and it helps in the transport of protons inside the vesicle that makes the environment acidic. Due to this acidic environment, that 6-phosphate of this mannose residue gets released. And as a result, the target hydrolase is also getting released. So as the, as the acidity, as that acidity slowly start to rise there the protein the target protein along with the mannose residue gets released because the phosphate gets released due to the high ac acidity and it also causes uh, this other structure of the of the vesicle that is mannose 6 receptor to completely dissociated from the hydrolase enzyme and as a result we have this high proton content inside now and we also have a one hydrolase enzyme inside this is the way many different hydrolytic enzymes are delivered inside this matured endosome I call, call it like late endosome now once this late endosome slowly start to acquire more and more of this hydrolyzing enzymes lipase uh, protease and all this type of enzymes slowly start to build up and making this acidic environment then that sac will be known as lysosome so while we're talking about delivery of proteins to the lysosome it's not like lysosome is preformed and the protein gets delivered but it's actually during the process of this transport lysosome is being formed from early endosome then late endosome then the modification of that into the lysosome that is a process of lysosomal protein transport I hope you understand this video if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you